let me record. Well, hello and welcome to Global Connection Network. And we are just having an exciting time uh, talking about the word of God and iron sharpens iron. All of us uh, gentlemen from around the world and ladies uh, who get on this call, uh, we are just enjoying uh, listening to how the Lord is using uh, each other in his word. And so we just wanted to kind of uh, start off today as we like to start each one of our sessions in prayer so that we can invoke the presence of the Lord in on everything that we're doing, because we believe that whenever we acknowledge him, he will direct our path. And certainly we want him to direct our path today. So I'm going to ask if you will, Pastor Ken, uh, if you would unmute and open us up in a word of prayer this morning, invoking the presence of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We love you for this time that you have given us to listen from you, King of Glory. Father, thank you. You're going to use the sower to plant the word, the seed in our life. We thank you, Father, you're going to use him in a mighty and glorious way. Let it be done through that word. Let it get the good soil, which is our hearts, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you and we love you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, do pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you Amen. so much. Well, I just wanted to uh, introduce who we are at the G Global Connection Network. I'm Pastor Aaron Motley from Montgomery, Alabama in the United States. And we have on this call, uh, Pastor Naboth and Pastor Ken uh, from uh, Uganda. And uh, well, I think both of you are from Kenya. Is that right? Yeah. I'm going to let you tell a little bit about yourselves. And uh, Pastor Naboth, uh is going to bring the message in just a moment. But uh, Pastor Ken, who just prayed, I'd like you just to tell us a little bit about yourself and those who are watching possibly for the first time. Amen. Glory to God. I thank you for these global uh, teachings that you are getting from you. May God bless you so much. And uh, here I'm, I'm in Kenya and we are working to preach the gospel here in Kenya under the mission that we, we call the name Secret Followers of Christ True Fellowship International Ministry. We are working here in Kenya. We are in Nairobi, and we, we are still young. We need your prayers. You guys who are listening to us, may God bless you so much. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for that. And uh, also from Nairobi, Kenya, is uh, Pastor Naboth. Uh, Abola, am I pronouncing your name right? Agola? Yes. Awala. <laughs> okay. Amen. And you have been uh, faithful with this uh, global connection network from the very beginning and also uh, delivering some great words of wisdom. And today we get to hear from you once again uh, how the Lord is, is working through you. And we want to have a little discussion uh, toward the end, but I want you to go ahead and, and just kind of give us uh, what is that word that the Lord has laid up on your heart uh, that is going to bless people around the world uh, today. Okay. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Bishop Aaron, for this wonderful work that the Lord has placed upon your heart. And we are very glad as a uh, Global Connection Network, and we also pray for you so that the Lord can give you more revelation, more anointing. We can be able to God. And as uh, as uh, as the name suggests, it's a global network connection that brings people from all of our walks of life with one sole purpose to give glory to God and to evangelize and to bring people to salvation of God. And I think. Uh, May God help you. May God lift you up for this a great initiative. It's, it, was, it wasn't easy, but it has taken the hands of God for you to bring people together. And we thank you and we pray for you that the Lord may expand you, the Lord may lift you wherever you are. And for those people who are, going, who are listening to me, maybe during the day, like ours in Nairobi, Kenya, we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are at night, and maybe all over the world, some people are experiencing day and night, day, we also thank God for everything because those are wonders from God. And uh, my name is Pastor Nabu Tutien Ogola. 
uh, hail from Kenya, and our, our ministry is great. A fellowship at Christ Church that is in Nairobi, Kenya, like Pastor Ken has said, it is still a relatively uh, new ministry. We are about three, four months old. And above all, we just thank God for everything that is doing upon our life. So let me go straight to the word of God as the Lord directs. So the theme of today, or rather the topic today, is obedience and unforgiveness lead to death. Obe uh, disobedient and unforgiveness leads to death. That is the theme of the word that the Lord has put into my heart. And uh, I hope we'll be blessed at the end of the reading. So I was looking at the word uh, disobedient and I was trying to, I know there are several meanings of disobedience, but uh, the basic meaning of disobedient or is to go contrary to the set out regulations or statutes or, and commands. It basically is to lack of uh, regard for authority or, or, or rulership. So the work of us is supposed to be obedient to the work of God. And once we're obedient to the work of God, then the Lord is going to remember us. But becoming an, uh, an, an obedient and unforgiveness leads to death. So if you're a Christian who is, who is still harboring unforgiveness and disobedient, know that the kingdom of God does not belong to you. And uh, also unforgiveness is intentional choice not to have compassion about somebody that has offended you or wronged you. And in this, in this phrase, I know many people are used to the word of saying, I've forgiven Pastor Ken, I've forgiven Bissell, but I'm not going to forget about it. That is the wrong impression about that. Because once you've forgotten, you've forgiven somebody, it means that it is something that is intentional. It should come from the bottom of your heart and simply say that I've forgiven you and forget about it. You only forgot everything wrong. He must have done to you, see or him I must have done to you. But in normal circumstances, people say, I've forgiven you, but I'm not going to forget about it. That is very wrong. So if you have, if you have, uh, 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 um, uh, unforgiveness and uh, disobedient, I want to assure you that you're not going to see the kingdom of God. So it is incumbent upon you and me to be obedient to the word of God because obedient is the only God, the only word that Jesus Christ left for us. So when I was talking about, when I was looking about, talking about obedience and uh, disobedient, disobedient and unforgiveness that lead to death, I was looking at uh, several people in the Bible that became disobedient and uh, their future did went, didn't went end well. And I have, the Bible is full of so many people. And I'm going to narrow, uh, narrow down on one individual and that's going to form the basis of our teaching of today. And we're going to learn from whatever he did, which led to God not making see the, what God has really intended for him. Like I told you, we have so many people, starting from Adam. Adam, was given the authority, was given the mandate to rule over the Garden of Eden. But because of disobedience, which came, the Bible tells us that he was thrown out of the Garden of Eden. But the intention of, the intention of God was for him to be free, to m m dominate, and to be everything. But because of disobedience, the Bible told us, told us he was thrown out of it. In the book of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 24, the Bible, the Bible clearly told that Gen, uh, in Genesis 23, 3 verse 3, 24, the Bible tells us when this servant of God, Adam, became disobedient, and then the Lord threw him out of Garden of Eden, and the Lord stays on uh, Cherubim, who was manning the Garden of Eden 24-7. So through disobedience, God threw him out. And I want to talk to somebody who might have a disobedience in him. Know that where God has purpose for you, you might be thrown out. So it is time for us to reflect on our obedience because God wants us to be obedient. And when you are obedient and, and you have forgiveness kind of heart, you are going to see the eternal life. But if you have contrary to that, the Bible is very clear on what to do. And I was telling you, a great servant, another example of somebody who had the disobedient kind of heart was Moses. Uh, Moses uh, had been promised 
uh, a land flow, flowing with honey, flowing everything. But because of disobedience, he never stepped onto that land of Canaan. So disobedient brothers and sisters who are listen, watching me or listening to me, it is something that God does not want. God wants us to be obedient people, people who, who are able to be used, and the people who are ready to be rectified. Whenever you've gone wrong, be ready to be rectified. And whenever you've been rectified, don't go back to the same situation that you are. Because God wants people who are very obedient. Very obedient. So Moses, uh, if you read in the book of uh, Ex Deuteronomy, chapter 1, from 19, you'll find that uh, God has already promised uh, Moses that you'll see and step on that land. And because of disobedience, he never stepped from that land. So many people look at the samples of King uh, King Saul with everything that the Lord gave him. The Lord brought him down from his uh, uh, leadership or rulership. So what am I talking about? That the Lord termed uh, disobedient as a, a rebellion. If you look at the book of First Psalm, chapter 15 and verse 20. Two to 23, it says that for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is an iniquity, is an iniquity and, uh, and, and idolatry. Because those are rejected the Lord, the Lord has also rejected you as a king. Very powerful words that the Lord is comparing disobedience as witchcraft, that the Lord is comparing uh, disobedience as idolatry with the worship of God's which God, which God does not want. So the more you become disobedient, brothers and sisters, the Lord is going to treat you as somebody who is a witchcraft or as somebody who is a idolatry. And you see, that one will lead to death because whoever is uh, worshiping none other than our Lord, Jehovah Yahweh, I want to assure you that hell is waiting for you. So it's time for us to come back and Look at what God intends for us. Without that, you are not going to go and invest what the Lord is, is, is has for you. So look at it that way, that the Lord can simply say that disobedient and unforgiveness can lead to death. So those are very powerful words. If you know that you have an element or an out of disobedience in you or unforgiveness, please, please return to the Lord so that you can be forgiven, because our Lord is a Lord of mercy. He's able to forgive us of all our sins, so that the Lord can be able to leave you, do a better life, do things of God. So the, the focal point I want to look at and see, there's one example which actually made me think about it how the Lord can do something to you, and then you just became disobedient away. And when you become disobedient, actually it leads to death. I want us to look at the story of one person in the Old Testament called Simea. Simea. This young man came from the uh, tribe of Benjamin, that was the tribe of uh, clan of uh, Saul. So this young man, uh, uh, David sold him some mass when David was still a king. And when this would sold him some mercy, but David was like, I know this man, the heart, it has a, it has a heart of disobedience. And then David said that, okay, let me just be with him. I monitor him, but I know the disobedience is in him. So David ran, and one time this young man decided to confront David and his great army. And when he confronted David and his great army, this man called Semea, from the tribe of Benjamin, threw mud at David and his great men, threw pelted stones at him. But David, because he was compassionate, didn't take any action. Even the great men that David had wanted to kill Simea. But David commanded him, no, you should not do that. What happened thereafter? This young man, David just went with these young men, strong people who were out to finish this man. Off. But David said, no, don't do that. Later on, when David, you know, I'm talking about when David was dethroned by his son, Abs Ab Absalom. So when David was going away, then uh, 
David reclaim the the the, the, the king's seat. Of course, Abisalom was dethroned him for temporary, but Abisalom was killed, and David went back and took the the the, the king's seat. So this cunning man, Simea, went and gathered about, about a thousand men from the tribe of Benjamin to reconcile with David because he knew that he was standing on a very shaky ground now because the, he thought that uh, David has already been dethroned and actually accused uh, David that because you killed my uh, you killed Saul this was that's why you've been dethroned by your son Abisalom and it was not support, it was not true thereafter what happened is that he went collected about a thousand men from Benjamin and went and uh, talk to David that please, please forgive me. And David was a man whose heart was after God. He forgave this young man called Simea. But he says he recently told his son Solomon, where towards the death, towards the end of his death, he told Solomon, I know this man called Simea is not a good man. But because I made an oath with him that I should not kill him, you also. Take care about him. He's not a man who is straightforward. So what happened is like he transferring a, a problem or rather to another young man. So the Bible told us that when Solomon, it's a long story, I'll give you a text. When Solomon was, was a king, the same, same, same uh, man called Simea, Solomon gave him very strict rules that Simea, I want you to stay in Jerusalem, build your house here. And when you build your house here, you should not move outside Jerusalem. Least something bad will happen to you. You'll be killed. Because of disobedience, this man called Samaria one time went out of Jerusalem simply to go and follow his two servants who ran away from him. So when he followed these two servants who ran away from him, uh, Simea went secretly, but when he came back, Solomon, now the king called him and asked him, Simea, where did you go? He lied, I didn't go anywhere, but he told you, I know you went outside Jerusalem. Because you've done that, you're going to face death. And for sure, he was executed. Look at it this way, brothers and sisters. Obedience can lead, disobedience can lead to death. He disobeyed Solomon. He also disobeyed his father, David. But David, being a man of God, never took any action against him. But remember, David left like a, a note to his son, Solomon, that if, young, if this man calls him man misbehaved, please finish him up. And it came to pass. This man was executed because of disobedience. Brothers and sisters, when you were talking about disobedience and unforgiveness, it leads to death. One, Simea decided to follow up his servants who ran away from him. The Bible has not told us why they ran away. It could be they were mistreated. But the Bible does not clearly talk, clearly talk about that. But the fact that they, mean that they ran away from their master. I believe and I know if your master is a good person, I don't think any servant could bear to run away from him. But this person ran away. The servants ran away from him. And when the servant ran away from him, he followed them. Forgetting that he also did wrong to both Solomon and his father David, but he was forgiven. That's why I come here to tell somebody, forgive your brother, forgive your sister, so that our Lord in heaven can also forgive you. It doesn't matter what wrong these servants did to him, but he pursued them. Had David also had the same heart as Simeon. He could have killed him, but he decided, I'm leaving everything unto God. I'm forgiven him. I'm not going to pursue him. But he decided to pursue the same. And that one cost his life. Because of disobedience, it cost the life of Simea. He was executed because he went contrary to what the agreement between him and 
King Solomon. Brothers who are listening to me today or tonight, regardless of the time where you are, let us be people who are obedient to the word of God. Because the moment you become disobedient and you become unforgiveness in your hearts, that's going to mark the end of you. Let's try to be people who are accommodative, people who have compassion over one another. It doesn't matter how many times he has wronged you. It doesn't matter. Because Jesus himself gave us. Jesus himself taught us that uh, it doesn't matter how many times you should give, you forgive your brother. It could be maybe he has bothered you severely, but have that heart of compassion so that you can accommodate. If you don't have the heart of accommodation, like what David had, brothers and sisters, who are you? Heaven does not belong to you. It is now incumbent upon you and me to be people who are able to forgive one another, people who are able to have that kind of compassion. Otherwise, heaven is not for us. You can find that one in the text of 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 19, 16 and 17. And also, we find that in 1 King chapter 3, so it's 1 King chapter 2, verse 36 to 37, it shows you what Samir did. And whatever he did cost his life. As I almost conclude, I want us to see lessons we learn from this. The lesson that we learn from this is that we should be obedient at all times. Disobedience leads to execution of Simea. When Simea disobeyed Solomon, he was executed. So, brother and sister, today, let us be people who are obedient. Disobedient made Adam to be thrown out of the garden of Eden where life was supposed to be good. The same, same disobedience made Moses not to set foot in the promised land. So let us be people who are able to obey what the Lord is telling us, his commandments, his statutes. Otherwise, we might not be able to see what God intends for us. Number two, we must forgive one another as Jesus Christ forgave us as our, our sins. And we must also forgive others. Let us not be there. Let us not be like the unforgiving servants, which are found in the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 26 to 35. And Jesus was giving an example of one servant who had borrowed money from him, who had borrowed money from his, his, his fellow worker. He went and asked the other worker, he need my money. And remember, he was already been forgiven by his, by his master. And he said, master, master, that I know, that I know, have, 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 have your money. Have but just forgive me and say it. His master, his master, pleaded with him. And with him. So when he went out and found his fellow worker, who had also his, his money, he fought that guy and threw this guy inside the prisons. So when the master had whatever happened, he was so mad and the same guy was good. So Jesus was giving a story that let us be people who forgive one another in Matthew 18, 26 and 20 and 35. Thirdly, life is all about learning. We should learn from every situation as children of God. Let us learn from whatever has happened to somebody. Let us learn. Because of time, as I conclude, the story of Simeon shows us that God loves us and God has companion over us. Therefore, we should also have companion over the other. The same way David had companion over him. Brothers and sisters, as I conclude because of time, so that others can also contribute, let us be people who are able to forgive one another and to be obedient. Because without obedience and forgiveness, death is for us. May God bless you. May God keep you. Thank you for listening to me. Back to you, Bishop Aaron.
for others also to give their insight as the Lord directs them. God bless you. Thank God for you, Pastor Nabal Ogola. That was excellent, excellent teaching there, um, reminding us of the importance of, of forgiveness and obedience. Um, and in fact, uh, when you are living a life of forgiving others, uh, you are being in obedience to God, you know, because he's given us uh, that as really a command because the scripture, even in the in the Lord's prayer, uh, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Uh, later on, it tells us that if we want forgiveness from God, we have to forgive others. Amen. So, so well, I want to ask this question. Uh, maybe everybody can unmute uh, real quickly if you want to respond to this. Why do you believe it's still so difficult for Christians to forgive? Anyone can just speak to that. I, I run across people, I don't know if you do, once in a while, as, as you said in the earlier part of the message, that some people will say, I'll forgive you, but I won't forget. Uh, you know, uh, somebody may want to speak to that because uh, we want to, we want to hear from us uh, on here to find out what you have observed or learned. What do you see? Why do you believe that there are some people who uh, uh, say they're children of God, but yet they say they have trouble uh, forgiving? Uh, Pastor uh, Samuel, uh, Mike uh, Bouye, um I uh, wrote something here in the chat at what, Matthew 18, 23 through 35, where it instructs us to forgive as we've forgiven and we've been forgiven. And he says, I wonder what is the hardest thing you ever forgave? Is there someone who did something to you that you just cannot forgive or even imagine wanting to forgive? Uh, okay, let's see if I get the rest of this. Uh, this sermon is about seeing the benefits of forgiveness, dispelling common misunderstandings about what forgiveness is. And so he's really given a great summary here of uh, what this message is really all about. Again, uh, I, I'll just kind of start this off because I have noticed that there are some people who still say, well, I'm a Christian, but I'm having trouble forgiving certain people or for certain things. You don't know what they did to me and all this kind of thing. Uh, I believe that the real problem with people who are having struggles with forgiveness uh, and obedience, and, and that is, is that they're really not allowing the spirit of God to work through them. Uh, they, you, you really have to make sure that you are born again. When you, when you receive forgiveness from God, when you recognize how much he loves you and no matter how what you've done, no matter how far you've fallen from, the, from, from God, um, he still loves you anyway. He still has, he's already done everything to um, forgive you on the cross. Amen. And so if he has forgiven us, no matter how, no matter how evil we may, think we have been. Notice how, how Shemaiah uh, treated David, and yet David uh, had a forgiving heart. Why? Because he loved God, and he was a man after God's own heart. So, Mike uh, Bouye, if you will, um, speak to that for us. So you have your hand yeah. up. Yeah, praise God. Me, I would think forgiveness really helps uh, a Christian. Only that... Um, most of the times uh, Christians uh, forget that uh, forgiveness, forgiveness does not only help the person you're forgiving, but it helps you too. Forgiveness is letting go. Yeah. In simple terms is when I have felt so bad about Pastor Montali, I, I have a burden on my heart. And this burden brings diseases to me. It causes a lot of, uh, actually, it even cuts off my anointing of worshiping, that whenever I see a bishop around, I feel I don't want to worship. So if, forgiveness is really needed in the church because it helps us become more lighter and become so, how they say, 
when you have, for example, I'll give an example. When you're carrying something on your head and uh, you feel you want to go somewhere and there is something on your head, it is killing you. The only thing of you getting deliverance is putting this thing on your head down. So when you have you have you have you have to forgive somebody, it's like you have had some burden, you have had some heavy thing on your head, and this thing has been pulling you down. Yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, mm. heavy and weight. And it is pressing you. And the only thing you ca it can help you is you getting that thing off your head, and you feel relieved. There is there is a lady we carried in the car. We found her on the road. She had firewood. And when we told you, hey, mom, should we help you to, to, to carry you to home? He's like, thank you, my son. Let me come in. He entered with the firewood on her head. We, 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 we drove a while and we asked her, but mom, why are you carrying the, the firewood on your head? That means we have not helped you. Though you're sitting still, you have the, the, the burden on your head. Please put it off. When she put it off, she's like, oh, my son, thank you. I didn't know that I can put it off. So a forgiveness needs you to put off your, 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 what is bothering you. You will try it out. When you feel you, my aunt, my can never forgive my auntie. My auntie did this to me. Try and forgive that auntie of yours and see if you will not be delivered. Actually, you'll feel more happier than before. Forgiveness, be brings you, you, forgiveness gives you happiness. Yes. Forgive, forgiveness gives you joy. It makes you feel as if you've been, you know, when you're in captive, and being unforgiveness ties you around the cage that you cannot even see what is happening around you because you're annoyed, you're angered. You don't want to see anybody. I don't want to hear anything from Mike. I don't want to, to talk to him. That makes you for, miss out other things. It makes you miss out points from him. But once you let go, it yes. gives you space to start learning. And I, our t I'm sorry, our time is about to run out. And that is excellent. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. That uh, helps to summarize what it's all about. Love one another. Learn to forgive. Ask God to help you for the power to forgive others if you're still carrying that heavy burden. It is freedom to forgive and be obedient to God. God bless you. We love you. Thank you so much for that teaching, Pastor Naboth. And thank you so much for your comments, uh, Mike Bowie and everyone else that's on this call today. I know we're running out of time, but join us again next time for another great teaching. God bless you. Unmute everybody and just, just God say- God bless you. It was wonderful. Give blessings to everybody that's watching. Praise the Lord.